tēnā koe te katoa, ko tai piri te maunga, ko waikato te awa, ko pōta tau te peropero te tangata, ko tainui te waka, ko waikato te iwi, ko ngāti mahuta te hapū, ko te awa marahi me tūranga waiwai ngā marae, ko mei kupa hau. I thank you everybody for being here today on this special day, ki ngi tangatei. Um, Jenny Lee, Dr. Jenny Lee, thank you for opening and looking after us as well. And to our presenters, Kahu Tamati, Rahoe Tō Kōrero, um, it's a um, privilege to be here amongst everyone today. Um, my kaupapa for today is about exploring mana motu hake in sustainable cultural tourism using a PhD study of Waikato Tainui. For those who were here last year, I also presented on Kingi Tanga Day, so please bear with me as my corridor is very similar, but I try to incorporate more of my findings into my research today. Um, oh, I'd also like to acknowledge my supervisors, sorry, Dr. Rangi Matamua and um, Sarah Jane, hopefully, um, for their support throughout my PhD journey. My PhD co-papa is about investment in sustainable cultural tourism, planning for the future benefit of Waikato Tainui along the Waikato River, using case studies at Turanga Waiwai and Te Awamarahi Marae. I'm currently near the end of my three-year PhD at the University of Waikato, and the goal of this research is to help Farno make plans for the long-term well-being of the tribe through sustainable cultural tourism. This doctorate is guided by the words of the second Māori king, King Port King Itafiao. Kia tupu, kia hua, kia puawai, to grow, prosper and sustain, which means that we humans, we need the natural environment for long-term growth and survival. These words were spoken in the 18th century, which proves that sustainability is not a new concept, it is about what we as humans choose, choose to prioritise when making money. What is sustainable cultural tourism? If practised correctly, sustainable cultural tourism will provide excellent care of the guests and the hosts. Um, it will care for the environment. It will help preserve our culture. It puts the well-being of our people first, such as long-term employment at all levels. And it must be driven by ourselves, alongside partners as well, for everyone. And in time, help bring money to the tribe and then to the country. I think it is also important to emphasise the difference between tourism and sustainable cultural tourism as tourism alone can potentially exploit host or indigenous communities, it can interfere with traditional ceremonies such as tangihanga, it can exploit the natural environment, control communities and prioritise financial returns. However, sustainable cultural tourism, it does the opposite. It challenges the conventional ways that um, businesses manage and practise tourism to prioritise the people, the culture, the natural environment, as well as financial returns. Um, prior to 1860, Waikato achieved prosperity under the leadership of Porto Tauti Whiro Whiro, the first Māori king. Te Kingi Tanga was created by all tribes to unite all iwi to stop the loss of land to European settlers. In 1863, the government illegally stole more than 1.3 million acres of rich, fertile land belonging to Waikato called Raupatu. Uh, as a result of Raupatu, Waikato suffered heavily, with thousands of innocent men, women and children were killed by the colonial forces eager to own our lands. Raupatu has meant that Waikato were denied the economic resources to participate in New Zealand's economy, and Raupatu continues to, to define the low socio-economic positioning of the Waikato people today. 
The Raupatu Settlement was signed in 1995, 21 years ago, which is equivalent to only 1% of the value of lands taken in 1863. Waikato was the first iwi to settle with government, which has set precedents for other iwi settlements, such as the Ngaitahu and the Tuhoi settlements. However, tourism is one of New Zealand's largest growing industries, which can help iwi grow. Um, it reached 29.8 billion last year and is forecasted to reach 41 billion uh, in, by 2025. The main driver of tourists to New Zealand is the natural landscape, then Māori culture. However, there has never been any funding for Māori tourism development in the past, despite that huge tourism revenue. Um, te Kingitanga and the Waikato River are what makes the Waikato unique. However, there is very little cultural tourism in the Waikato. Uh, te Kingitanga and our culture are taonga gifted from our tupuna, which is why it is important to work with our people and work with our marae not on top of them. A big challenge as well for iwi has been the mainstream media who continue to portray a negative portrayal of Māori. This sustainable cultural tourism will allow us to share our stories about ourselves in a true, positive and empowering way. Many of you will know that tourism initiatives are not new to Māori or Indigenous people throughout the world. I would like to share this quote from Sir Robert Mahuta, said in 1987, as an example which offers us with opportunities to create initiatives designed, developed and delivered by ourselves. Māori groups are already well advanced in thinking about the potential of tourism in this country and the vital role they could play in this growth industry. Māori are very interested in autonomy and want to run their own show. We, we don't want to provide a tacked on plastic Māori experience in the venue of facilities belonging to others. We want to provide authentic experiences, learning experiences through which we can learn to interacting with our guests. We want to put added value into the visitor experience, not to have others do that for us. The Waikato River represents the mana and modi of the people and is central to tribal identity, spiritual and physical being of the Waikato Kainui. The Waikato Kainui. Here you can see the many marae in the Waikato which tend to follow the flow of the Waikato River as the river was once a vital source of food, water and survival for the people. Today the river uh, is no longer a food source for the people as it is heavily polluted by farming industries, uh, cities and towns. Um, here's the current investments, tourism investments by the tribe. We've invested about 40 million into the Novotel and the airport, about 20 million into the Ibis Hope Hamilton, 25 into Novotel. Hamilton and about 200 million into the base. So um, one thing they all have in common is that they are all commercially driven only and they employ for a few of our people. And there's potentially another commercial hotel that's going to be built in Auckland. Um, other major investments by the tribe, except GoBus, where, where they employ a lot of our people, but we made investments in 2014 into GoBus, are commercially driven and are rep replicas of Western concepts of development. Um, this is a graph developed by Dr. Kukutai, a leading demographer in New Zealand. It's about the well-being of Waikato Tainui over the past 21 years since the settlement. Here you can see how the profits have risen, but however, the well-being over the past 21 years has stayed the same. This 
graph here was developed by Professor Graham Smith about the ideal optimum well-being for iwi. And here you can see that the well-being is growing as well, at this, maybe not at the same rate, but it's growing at, um, as well as the profits. So that's about making investments which prioritise social, cultural, environmental, as well as economic returns. So my research findings, um, I've received 100% support from Marae members interviewed towards investment in sustainable cultural tourism. After 21 years of post-settlement, the people would now want social, cultural, environmental and economic returns, not only commercial returns. Um, making money is the easy part. Social, cultural, environmental and economic returns is the challenge, which I am confident that sustainable cultural tourism can provide. I think our people have been extremely patient these 21 years to ask for these types of investments. This is not about disregarding all the commercial investments. It's about uh, starting at least one investment that prioritises all those returns. I think governance needs to have faith in our people, not to always have faith in Pākehā or TGH governance to make money for us. A theme that was often raised during interviews is that without the people, there is no Raupatu settlement, meaning it is the people's land and money, not these. So uh, the people want Manamotu Hake, where the people are in control of their destinies and not dependent on other people to determine their futures. I kind of view this as another form of Raupatu, but we are the, we are the oppressors. We allow TGH to use the people's land and money to fund their initiatives that grow to their people, not ours. Furthermore, in this research, 14 successful Māori tourism providers have shared their challenges and strengths for iwi to consider. Indigenous people over the world have engaged in sustainable cultural tourism, which have proven successful. Uh, but yeah, so here got the Manamotu Hake is what is said on the carving here, which represents the coat of arms of Waikato Tainui. I believe in order for Manamotu Hake to truly exist for Whānau, Hapu and Iwi, we need to prioritise these four key goals uh, across all tribal sectors, including governance, investments and operations. Only then would we see the true meaning of Māori or Indigenous autonomy. So these te tangata, the people, te taiao, the natural environment, the culture and the economy, these are all the same goals as sustainable cultural tourism. So my advice so far to iwi and tourism is to be fully committed and competitive. It will be hard work. Don't be confined to cultural tourism alone. Invest, um, look at, um, find out what are the most vital tourist demands in your region, such as boat cruises, hotels, adventure tourism. And um, do your homework, do your research and work together with your people. Then invest in it or create partnerships. And, um, Iwi throughout New Zealand can add their unique cultural flavour to the business. Um, also, at the start of your the three to five year planning and construction of your business, immediately begin offering scholarships to the people in targeted areas to fill key roles. Don't start this vital process at the end when it is finished, otherwise you will have to look outside for skilled staff. And finally, make it sustainable. I believe Iwi will be a major leader in the industry. So my dreams for Iwi for the future are to aspire to the days of King Ibotato and the days of our great Iwi leaders, which was only about 158 years ago. 
Chibes had mana motu hake, we were strong, healthy, fluent in te reo Māori, me ōna tikanga and own most of New Zealand's land and resources. We were highly educated in iwi whare wānanga. We were socially, culturally, environmentally and economically successful. We exported overseas and employed our people. These are the days that I aspire towards, not only for Waikato, but for all iwi. So, um, oh, these are the current benefits of the research for marae and iwi. But basically, the key ones is to improve the well-being of the people, including kaumātua, tamariki and future generations. To seek ideal local, national, international partnership and investment, and to initiate investment into other sustainable um, indigenous industries, um, such as biofuel, mahiraranga, Māori art and carving, and sustainable primary industries. And I'd like to conclude this presentation with the words of Princess Hupuya Herangi. Mehe mea ka moe moe a hau ko a hau anaki. Mehe mea ka moe moe a tātou ka taia e tātou. Nō reira. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Kia ora nō tātou katoa. Thank you.